Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the top 10 reasons why a blower motor may not be working. So this happens to be a forced air gas furnace. Right here we have our blower motor housing, uh, our squirrel cage. Up top we have our blower motor. Our first reason is the capacitor could be bad. So if you happen to have a PSE blower motor, which would look like this, and have two brown wires, these two brown wires are attached to the capacitor. And if that capacitor is actually no longer any good, then the permanent split capacitor blower motor will not operate. It won't turn on, and uh, you could try to free spin it, but the blower motor could overheat over time, and you don't want to do that. You want to make sure to go ahead and replace the capacitor. So first things first, make sure the power's off to your furnace, and not just on your door switch. Make sure the main power's off. You're going to isolate your capacitor, take that off, and you're going to read your uh, microfarad reading. This one's 7.5 MFD. And you're going to want to go ahead and short that out with something that's bare metal. So this is bare metal, and we shorted that out. So we go ahead and take our multimeter out, and we turn it on to capacitance. So I'm going to press this select button until I get over to capacitance. And you want to go ahead and hold your probes on the capacitor for maybe 10, 20 seconds in order to get a good reading. So right here you see that we're reading 7.63 microfarads and our reading on the capacitor was 7.5 right there. Okay, so this capacitor is good, but if it was bad, this capacitor right here, if you, if you can see this, uh, it actually is 12.5 UF right here. And our multimeter is reading zero microfarads. So, so I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually bulged at the top. As well, it's actually bulged here too. So um, that's actually a bad capacitor. Also, if you see it leaking any fluid, uh, that's also another sign it's a bad capacitor, especially if you see it dripping down the side here. Or the capacitor could look just like this one right here, and it says 7.5, and it maybe you read 7, or maybe you read 6.5. Uh, it needs to be within plus or minus 5%, and I usually like to see them up above whatever the rating is. As well, if you take out a 440 uh, VAC capacitor, replace it with a 440. If you're, if you're taking out a 370 VAC, then you can replace it with a 370 or a 440. Another problem could be that the blower motor bearings could be bad. So what you want to do is make sure the power's off, and then you can feel in here and see if it's actually free spins, and also see if there's any rocking that occurs when you try to move it. That would both indicate that the bearings will be bad if it doesn't move or that there is some rocking and binding up in there. So on this one, that would be right down in here, but make sure that the power is off before checking that. Another thing that could be the problem is this thermal overload. So if you happen to be reading resistance value of say OL between the common wire and the hot wire, or whatever hot wire that you're powering the blower motor with, this one happens to be a PSE blower motor with a high speed, second from highest, medium, and low speed. The two brown wires are for the capacitor. Uh, this thermal overload is actually uh, mounted right onto the electrical windings. And if those electrical windings get hot due to maybe a bad capacitor or some other issue uh, over time, this may take a long time to end up resetting. Uh, so if you happen to have the blower motor turn on every once in a while, but then basically shut off, on its own, it may be the thermal overload. So this is number four. Another reason why the blower motor may not be turning on is possibly that the blower motor has shorted out inside. So if it pops a breaker anytime you turn the, the air handler on, it's possible that these windings have shorted together. So basically, say your common wire has shorted with your hot wire, and that's why it's uh, popping the breaker. If it doesn't pop the breaker and the blower motor is not turning on, then it's possible that these windings have actually uh, opened up. So burnt apart, but they're not shorted against anything. Reason number five, this happens to be an X13. This one happens to be a 2.3. These are ECM motors, and you could have a bad control hub on the side of your, of your motor. So this attaches right here. This attaches right here on the side. And typically, it's not typically the motor itself, you know, and we already talked about if it's a bearing uh, issue, you know, if we were to test these windings, these are three phase windings, and it's actually for DC voltage uh, from here, it's a three phase motor for DC voltage. So you see 4.5 there, and we'll test this, 
this is 4.5 and we'll test this right here 4.5 and then you can check between each of these and the ground you should have no resistance reading to ground so check that we'll check this one and we'll check here so we had ol the entire time we were checking to ground like I said, typically it's not the actual motors itself, but it is typically the hub or the module, whatever you'd like to call it. On this one, on the X13, you make sure that you have 24 volt signal going to the motor. And you have to look at the uh, wiring diagram of the furnace or air handler to see which one of these is powered with 24 volts. Make sure that you have your 120 volts into this, or if it's 244 an outdoor package unit or air handler. Make sure that you always have your line voltage. It should have line voltage all the time. Even if the blower motor is not called uh, for electricity, any type of ECM blower motor typically always has uh, your high voltage. And then it's just waiting for either a 24 volt signal, in the case of a X13, a 24 volt signal, in the case of a 2.3, or a DC millivolt reading with the ECM 3.0. But you can bypass the ECM 3.0 and the uh, 2.3 with uh, this tool right here, it's the TechMate Pro, and you can actually um, just connect this right in or connect your 16 pin connector in, and you can check your variable speed motor operation with that. And I have some links for testing variable speed blower motors and uh, X13 blower motors down in the description below. Reason number six could be that the control board is not sending the communication to the variable speed blower motor. In this case, the control board may not be sending the 120 volts or say 240 volts over to the PSE blower motor. Uh, in this case, where you have a PSE blower motor, these are relays right in here, all these, uh, these boxes right here. So the relay may be just stuck open uh, or the winding may be bad in it. Uh, something could be bad and it's just not sending the 120 volt signal to the uh, the blower motor right here. The control board should send the line voltage to the PSE blower motor anytime it has a 24 volt signal on the G terminal right here, which can be read with a multimeter between G and C. In the case of a control board sending voltage to a variable speed blower motor, once again, you check for 24 volts between the G terminal and the common to see if you have 24 volts. And then you're gonna see if the blower motor is good. If the blower motor is turning on and it's running properly, then you know that your control board is bad. And you can test your blower motor with your TechMate Pro. Reason number seven could be that your blower motor actually is running, but it's not able to push any air through the duct because of maybe a clogged air filter or possibly a collapsed duct or maybe even an open duct. So I've seen before in say crawl spaces where the duct was just down too low and it was touching water and eventually rotted out and the airflow is just going right into the crawl space. I've seen dirty filters before destroy variable speed blower motors. Basically it makes the variable speed blower motor uh, apply more torque onto the motor and eventually it ends up burning itself out. I've seen collapsed ducts where animals get in or uh, the duct is just old and it just kind of falls apart in on itself. Reason number eight could be a fan limit control. So you may have this on an oil-fired or gas-fired furnace. And what happens is as the uh, inside heat exchanger ends up warming up, this is supposed to turn. What could be happening is this bimetal could be jammed up onto the side here and it's just not allowing this wheel to move. So this could end up being the culprit. Reason number nine could be if you're equipped with some type of fan relay in order to control the blower motor, uh, such as this right here. If you notice this, maybe there's a bad connection right here where it's kind of burnt apart, or possibly the coil uh, inside is actually burnt apart. So that could be checked with just a simple resistance reading. On this coil right here, you see between one and three is the coil. So we can test between one and three, and one is located here, three is located there. So we can check our resistance value right here. So what we're testing is the coil at one to three, and you see that you have 82.9 ohms of resistance. So if you're reading OL, then that means that the coil is burnt apart. So that would indicate that you have a bad relay right there. Uh, like I said as well, you could have burnt contacts. 
And number 10 could be that your control board is not getting the 24 volt signal for when you turn the fan on or in cooling mode. So it may not be actually getting a 24 volt signal to the G wire. So in this instance, let's just turn the fan to the on and we're gonna check from G to C and you see that we're reading 27.8 volts. So that is good. All right, so that should be now allowing the board to know that it needs to send voltage to the blower motor. If you did not have that signal and you think that you should, then, you know, if you read 0, 0.0 something or whatever, if you're not getting 24 volts uh, or anything between 24 to 29 volts between G and common, then your thermostat is not sending the signal for the blower motor to turn on. I will tell you that, you know, if you turn cooling on, then this thermostat is going to send 24 volts to the G and to the Y. But with most control boards, if you at least send 24 volts to the Y, it will then automatically uh, send voltage itself to the G. Uh, it will also turn the blower motor on at its highest fan speed uh, for the cooling mode. But if you have a, a relay system, uh, then your thermostat really needs to send the 24 volts to Y and to G uh, from the thermostat itself. So you just need to make sure that you have 24 volts going to the board to tell it to turn on. And in this case, we can actually test our 120 volts coming off of the control board to our blower motor. We're gonna go over to the heat terminal and the common for 120 volts and we read 123.7. So when you're calling for a G terminal, typically it powers the, the heat fan speed. All right, so not the cooling fan speed, but the heat fan speed typically. So those are the top 10 reasons. If you have other reasons that you uh, have run into, put them down in the comment section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech, where we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content, such as articles, videos, and answering questions. How patreon.com works is for every new video I'm posting here on YouTube for AC Service Tech YouTube channel, the patrons over at patreon.com slash acservicetech are supporting by giving a dollar a video or maybe three dollars or five dollars for every new video posted here on YouTube. To thank them for their support, I'm actually writing articles for them or answering questions or uh, I have some videos posted there uh, just in order to show my appreciation for their support. If you're looking for the tools and supplies used in this video, such as the multimeter or the uh, TechMate Pro, I have them all linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.